Welcome back. Today we're looking at this brand new from Victor, the 970 multimeter. And check out that gorgeous 2.4 inch color screen. It's dirt cheap, claims true RMS, and it showed up from AliExpress looking way more confident than it probably should. Here we are looking at the Victor uh, 970, a budget digital multimeter aimed probably at the hobbyist, the DIYer, and I'd say anyone who wants some measurement uh, without selling a kidney, if you know what I'm saying. On paper, it actually looks pretty decent. True RMS, auto ranging, frequency, capacitance, and a current measurement up to 10 amps. And let's not forget that gorgeous, gorgeous color screen. And the price point, price point, under $20 US, under 20 US. Um, on sale, AliExpress, I was on sale. Uh, now the price went up to, I think, 23 24 but end of the day, it is a definite cheapo. Hey, first impressions, build quality. I gotta say, not that shabby. It's not terrible, that's for sure. Uh, the case does feel maybe a little bit plasticky. And uh, that rotary switch, it's it's interesting. It's interesting, but it does work. It has a nice solid click, hits those uh, ranges with authority. Uh, takes a little bit, but end of the day, it's not bad, not bad. Honestly, I'm surprised for the price, uh, really nice. And something else that surprised me, a lot of times in the cheaper range, the buttons they give you are really plasticky, aka, you know, cheap. Not here, not so. Nice, soft touch buttons. Uh, I, I like it. Honestly, surprising for the price, I've seen way worse. Um, you know, maybe not the highest of high-end quality, but for 20 bucks, seriously? And that screen, I mean, check it out. One of the highlights, big numbers, backlight, bar graph, clear icons, gorgeous, gorgeous contrast with that color. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a professional. You don't want to squint. You don't want to guess what mode you're in. Everything just looks really, really nice. Powered by, yeah, you got it. One, I believe it's an 18650. We'll take a look when we pull it apart. Rechargeable lithium battery. And we have that nice battery icon indicator at the top right. Overall, I mean, wow. Leads probably a little bit above your generic nice pointy tips. Uh, we have that uh, 1000 volt cat 3 rating 10 amp high current and they feel pretty good actually They're, They don't feel super cheap. They have a pretty good alignment to them in the hand and uh, look at that nice protection here At the end for those finger guards all in all pretty sweet and on the other end as well We've got a long input here. So it's also going to help uh, you know terms of safety what have you so pretty decent now they're not you know they're your standard pvc kind of a lead but that being said not bad not bad at all we also get that usb c charging cable because we do have that chargeable battery inside and we get our instruction manual black and white and i believe this one is all in english so you know once again for a 20 dollar cheapo meter no complaints, no complaints. AC DC volts, resistance, continuity, diode test, frequency, capacitance, uh, low current, high current, true RMS. I mean, once again, it checks off everything from that budget meter checklist. USB C charging port at the top of the meter, like so. Test lead holders as well, nicely done on the back. Now, in terms of tilt stand, Sometimes you will get a tilt stand that actually you can open up with those test inputs in the back. But here, it, it can, but it's a little, yeah, it kind of gets in the way. It doesn't really work that well. Speaking of tilt stand, though, really nice. Comes out at a good, oh, 45 degree angle or so. Nice wide base. We don't have a rubber inlay on the back, but nonetheless, it's pretty decent. Pretty solid tilt stand all around. Doesn't flappity flap. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Sixty-eight point four decibels, maximum output in continuity.
3.9 volts maximum voltage in diode mode. And coming in at 99.4 ohm. Alright, so next thing is the teardown. And this is a bit of a pain because that boot is in there really good, especially the first time. So I'm gonna attempt to uh, take this off, struggle a bit, and take a look on the inside. Bear with me. Ugh, it's coming off. There we go. Oh, yeah. Ugh, okay. All right. Oops. And, whew, we did it. Oh, look at that. The, the, uh, the little ESPC is actually a separate entity. Oh, cool. All right. So, ah, good stuff. Let's see. We got one, four, four Phillips screws. One, two, three, four. Let's take this puppy apart. See what's on the inside. Let's take a look at that in protection, shall we? Starting off with the reverse side of the meter. No shielding. Well, you know, I don't say much anymore because we never see it barely. But uh, yeah, no Faraday cage going on here. I don't know why. I don't know why they can't put shielding on meters. It doesn't cost anything. Peanuts. Anyway. Wow. Big 18650. First thing you see. And you know what? Just, just because it's there, let's take a peek at it. So it's a 2000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt. 18650 battery. So over here we have the uh, two ceramic fuses, 600 milliamp, 250 volt for the microamp milliamp ranges, and of course we have the larger 10 amp fuse for the 10 amp uh, high current input. So real fuses, we're not getting some cheapy wire links, what have you. Ceramic style definitely better than glass, helps when it comes to that arc suppression. And uh, don't know about a low interrupt rating. Uh, typically cheap meters have one to two kiloamp max, but uh, I'm not sure about this. Anyway, definitely acceptable for bench work. Is it, you know, Cat 3? Uh, I don't know, probably not, but bench electronics, not a problem. We have the PTC and MOV network, the right and green, uh, the blue and green discs. MOVs are metal oxide barristers, and uh, these PTCs are likely in series. So what these guys do, they clamp voltage spikes, they limit surge current, and they protect the ADC from, from the front end. So nice. You don't often see this again, especially in a $20 meter. Um, properly placed right, right near the input. They're a little bit on the smaller size. So in terms of input uh, energy handling, probably not as good as a uh, professional grade uh, electrician's meter. But that being said, for bench work, certainly uh, it's basic transient protection. It's not lightning or panel level, but it's definitely going to do the job for bench electronics. High value precision resistors, and we have good spacing as well. Um, it's, it's good. I mean, decent creepage going on. We have that voltage divider topology, everything kind of per the book. No obvious shortcuts that I can see. Um, you know, it's going to protect the IC from anything funky going on. Input jacks, once again, they're the split variety, PCB mounted, uh, minimal physical isolation, yeah, um, you know, and, and no really blast shield or, or deep channeling protection, but once again, it is it is a budget meter, and I'm okay with that, I'm okay with that. Overall, you know, I gotta say, you know, it's good. I'm liking, I'm liking. The main IC actually is not even hidden. What is that main IC? Hang on a second. Take a look at that funky IC. I mean, short answer, there's, there's no publicly identifiable off-the-shelf IC name for this chip. Basically, we're looking at a customer house-marked uh, multimeter ASIC. So, uh, it's not a bad thing. GZGAA doesn't correspond to anything in a data sheet uh, from any known DMM IC vendors I know, like Cyrus Tech, Fortune, Microchip, etc. Uh, yeah, so probably this is from an OEM made specifically for Victor based on common uh, DMM cores. Uh, but it's definitely rebadged. So uh, anyway, not a bad thing. Um, LQFP 48 to 64 pin package by the looks of it. All in all decent. So it has your Sigma Delta ADC LCD segment driver. Uh, continuity buzzer driver. Auto ranging logic. A switching control. Uh, the whole nine yards built into this little OEM provided IC. Not a bad thing. Over here as well we have that LCD display. Connector. Probably not going to open up this on the other side, 
but uh, generally speaking it, it's it's a pretty clean lean pcb machine from what i can see I, i'm pretty happy with it I, i've got no complaints here we have our rechargeable USB-C connector over there. And of course, once again, on the other side, here's our tiny little current shunt. It's a small one. But generally speaking, you know what? For a $20 meter, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Okay, so I have uh, the Victor alongside an Alien Tech, pretty popular new meter as well, on my to-do list. And anyway, looking at the Victor today, This is a 10,000 microfarad capacitor. And I just want to see speed-wise, which is better. I am really curious. So here we are right now with the Alien Tech in capacitance mode, top left of the screen. It's now in millifarad mode. 9.22 millifarad. Okay, so let's compare that to the Victor on the right. Say that was what about eight seconds nine seconds here we go with the victor same capacitor and boom look at that look at that beat the victor by a long shot not beat the victor i'm sorry beat the alien tech so impressive impressive 20 bucks but a hundred bucks yeah okay now we're gonna do a couple of low capacitor tests here with the dmm check plus awesome awesome piece of kit if you want precision, check them out, dmmcheckplus.com. Amazing people, great, great workmanship. They put a lot of quality in their stuff. So thank you again, DMM Check Plus, for providing this amazing piece of test equipment to keep on testing. Love it, love it, use it all the time. Okay, here we go. 0 0.001 microfarad capacitor, one nanofarad, perfect. 10 nanofarad, spot on. 0.1 microfarad, four points out, 99.6 nanofarad. Finally, one microfarad capacitor, 1.084. Awesome, good stuff. Three amps, 2.7, four. And up to five amps and we're falling short coming in around 4.3 and I'm maxed out here on my little portable for nursey power supply but yeah that is a little on the low end all right I thought that was a little bit bizarre but no the Victor is just fine that for nursey uh, little power supply just acting a little funky probably something to do with the dc power input but anyway we are hooked up now to the matrix dc power supply and look at that i have no problems whatsoever in high current mode almost spot on right through all that high current range yeah looking really really good 1.5 coming up as 1.48 on the victor let's bring it down to about one amp 0.989 hey for a 20 dollar meter this is impressive so all in all high current looking good on the victor 970. finally take a look at a low current 100 milliamp precision and 99.7 out of 100 milliamp awesome closing thoughts on the tiny little victor 970 well it's not that tiny it's just tiny in price hey should you buy it Oh yeah, why don't you have it? The Victor 970 is awesome. For the price, it's hard to beat. Mean, lean, cheapo color, display, multimeter machine. Hey, if you're a beginner hobbyist, just need a cheap secondary meter. I hope you got more than two. Yeah, it actually makes sense. If you're an electrician, or you, you, you like your eyebrows where they are, you might want to spend a bit more. Huh. You know, this is one of those Know Your Limits meters. But for the price, the Victor 970 is really better than it has any right to be. It's not a professional grade, but it doesn't pretend to be either. It's got that good basic input protection that is more than uh, venerable for what it's meant to be used for. The only thing that I really don't understand uh, lacking from this meter is the fact we have no NCV, no non-contact voltage and a cheapo. I mean, none. That would have really made sense. Ah, it's a cheapo. At the top, we have that really nice LED being used for continuity. I mean, why don't we have NCV? Uh. 
For around 20 bucks US, bang for buck, this one is hard to beat. Give us that NCV and temperature, and you've got a five star meter. The Victor 970 Cheapo Extraordinaire gets a solid four out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. <laughs>